Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question to sum. Alright, so in this question we're going to be given an array of integers called nums and an integer called target. The goal here is to return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. And there is going to be exactly one solution. Cool, so let's just look at an example. So let's say we have a set of numbers and we have a target of 9. So basically, what two numbers add up to 9? In this case, it's the number 2 and 7, and we're going to return its indices, which is 0 and 1. Pretty simple. So let's actually first look at a brute force solution, right? So this is going to be pretty obvious. We look at all of the possibilities with two for loops, and we add those two numbers, and if it's equal to the target, we, we're going to return those two indices. Now, an obvious problem with this is the time complexity. This is going to take big O of n squared time complexity, and uh, especially the length of nums could be up to 10 to the power of 4, which is really big. So we have to try to come up with a solution that is less than big O of n squared, hopefully in linear time. So let's actually look at this question over here and try to come up with a better solution. Now, obviously, in this case, the target is 9. The two numbers that we want to add are 2 and 7. And in this case, the indices, I'll just write them over here. So those are the indices. The indices we would return are 0 and 3, right? But how exactly do we come up with the solution in uh, linear time, right? So let's actually go through this area. Let's iterate through it and try to extract information. Now, we have the number 2. That's the first thing we get, right? Now, what information does this tell us? Now, the first obvious thing is that we know that this number exists, right? So whatever number we go through, we know that that number exists in the list, obviously. And, but this also tells us one more thing. We can find out 2 plus what number, let's just call it x, is equal to 9. And obviously that is nothing else but 9 minus x. So in this case, what number when added to 2 gives us 9? Well, pretty obviously 9 minus 2 is going to be equal to 7. Now what this tells us, when we go on the number 2, that tells us we have the number 2, and that also tells us that if the number 7 also exists, we have found a pair that when added up is going to give us the target, right? So whatever number we go through, we can find out what the under other number should be to get a valid pair which adds up to 9, right? So this is what we're going to do. Now, if at any point we come across this number over here, that means that we have found the pair that we're looking for, right? So let's just see that. So in this case over here, uh, the next number is 11, okay? So we have the number 11. Now, what number, when added to 11, will give us 9? 11 is greater than 9, so it is going to be a negative number. And in this case, that is negative 2, right? Now, same thing with 15, right? So 15. And remember, each time we're checking if, uh, what are, so if 15 is in any of these two values. It's not, so we uh, look, keep going on, right? So in this case, 15. Uh, 9 minus 15, so that is going to be minus 6. So this tells us that if there is a minus 6, that is going to be a valid pair. So now finally, we go on the number 7. And 7 exists in this list over here. So what that means is the other number, which in this case 9 minus 7 is 2, the number 2 has already been visited. So that means we have found our pair, right? So now we found the pair, but what we want to return is the indices. Now, how exactly are we going to do that? Now, a simple thing is, what is what exactly are we storing? So we're storing these values over here, right? 7, negative 2, and negative 6. So instead, what we could do is we could store it as a pair, right? Or, or instead, specifically, as a map. So instead, what we could do is we could say the value 7. So now we go on the number 2, right? So the next value that we want to look for is 7, right? And we can also keep track of what index is the current value on. So the current value with the, which for what we need the 7 is at the index 0, right? So this means that the first value, 2, is at the index 0. And if we find a 7, we're going to return that index and the 0, okay? So I'll just show you what this looks like. So now we go on to 11. So the other value for 11 that we need to get a sum of 9 is negative 2. And 11 is at an index of 1. And similarly for 15, we want a value of negative 6. And if it exists, we're going to return it with the index 2. 
Now we finally go on to the value 7 over here. And the 7 exists inside of our dictionary. Since 7 is in the dictionary, that means that we're going to return this index itself, which is the index 3, and whatever index that is over here. So we found the value 7, its index, which is the current index, and the previous value, which is 9 minus 7, 2's index, which is 0. So we're going to return 0 and 3, and that is going to be our solution. So let me just show you what that looks like in code as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, initialize our dictionary over here. Uh, now we're going to iterate through the numbers. So we want to get the index and the numbers, so we're just going to enumerate through our list. So uh, if you don't know what that does, it's going to give you the value itself and the index together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if this current number is already in our dictionary, right? So if num in dictionary. Now, if this is the case, we're going to do something. But if this is not the case, we have to add a value to our dictionary. Now, what value are we going to add? Now, the value that we're going to add is going to be the remaining value, right? So even in this example over here, we added the 7, which is the other number that we are looking for, right? So we're going to add that value. So that is going to be nothing else but the target minus num. So we're going to add that value, and we're going to have a value of the current index. So when we added 7, we had an index of 0. So that's going to be equal to the current index. That's it. Okay, so now we have the condition of if we have found the number. So exactly over here, the number 7, we have found the number 7 in the dictionary. So we just need to return the values. So we return whatever is in the dictionary, the value there, and the current index. So that is just going to be return. So we return, oh sorry. So we return that value from the dictionary. So D num. And we're also going to return the current index. And that should be our solution. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions.